What's up, Brozones? Welcome to the Ozone and welcome to another FNAF story reaction. We are doing the final story in Tiger Rock. So we've done Tiger Rock, we've done the Monty Within, and we've done the epilogues. So far, this book, I think, is is kind of... I'd say it's kind of mid when it comes to Tales books, at least. I think Tales has been, like, consistently great. So, like, this is still really good, but I think it's kind of, like, on the lower end. Uh, but hopefully this story will change it. I'm not sure if it will, because apparently this... I Like, I've heard mixed reviews on this like it's it's apparently a story and I think it's going to be a really mature story and it's going to be it's gonna it's gonna hurt <laughs> I think it's gonna hurt it's called bleeding heart you've clicked on the title you know that already uh we are in the Reddit discord server this is the book's leaks of course I should probably clarify that at the beginning of every video we are in the Reddit discord not my discord look up the FNAF reddit and um and you can join the discord server so, before we begin this story, I have been told to clarify that there are going to be some, some, uh, <laughs> yeah, content warning, content warning, there we go. Um, so there's going to be some stuff in here that may not be suitable for all readers, for all watchers, for all listeners, for all readers of this book. Uh, and, and like, I, I find it weird that the books don't say that in the books, but whatever. Um, anyway, yeah, so there's going to be some stuff about relationship issues in here. And there may be some self-harming as well. So just saying, if, if you feel like you're going to be affected by that sort of stuff and it's not suitable for you, then click off this video. Don't read the story, like, at least don't read the sto story fully. You can get a summary later on or something like that. But, um... Just be wary of that. Uh, I might need to be wary of that <laughs> because I feel like this might this might hurt. <laughs> but it's fine. I'm coming with a positive attitude, fresh outlook. Um, and also, I, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some hotlines down in the description just in case there are some sort of um, like mental health, mental health stuff in here, because that is very important. And I, and I care about you as viewers um, and just make sure that you get the help that you need if you ever feel down. Um, so there we go. <laughs> anyway, I'm not very good at talking about that sort of stuff. We should probably just get into the story. Again, content warning. Uh, I think act actually Blaine says it right here. It is Blaine that is reading again. So welcome back, Blaine. Uh, <laughs> very important warning out added after the fact. This story tackles heavy subjects in a way that will definitely not be suitable for everyone. You are so much better at this than me. <laughs> I myself found myself turned off by the story towards the end, which can be seen in my change in attitude, lack of jokes, for example. Okay, that's good. Thank you. Thank you so much for doing that. I know Cube has added a warning towards the bottom, but I will once again add this for future readers, including you, Ozone. <laughs> I love I love it when you mention me in these live reads. It's so funny. I love that um, we kind of have this not connection. That's, that's probably the wrong word, but like I love how we how we know about each other anyway. It's pretty cool that we can, uh, that I can read. Anyway, her name was Daisy Zayland. I'm, I'm looking out for foreshadowing because it's going to be right at the beginning if there's any foreshadowing. But who is Daisy Zayland? She was the coolest girl in Bayer High School, to Danny Schellenberg anyway. She was walking down the hallway right towards him. When she walked, her blondish brown hair swayed at her shoulders. Her eyelashes fluttered over her golden eyes. Her eyebrows were perfectly arched. Her face was heart-shaped. Heart-shaped, bleeding heart. Uh-oh. He knew because he'd sketched her a bunch of times. Not that she knew anything about that. Daisy never gave him the time of day. Golden eyes are like brownish, so Eleanor fans stay losing. <laughs> Daisy, however... Danny compares to a vibrant purple or a dazzling orange, the type that catches your attention right away and can't mix with others yet. Uh, oh, Danny is an artist, apparently. When he sketched her, he even drew the little star she had tattooed on her wrist. Yes, Daisy was the only girl at Bayer High who had a real tattoo. Okay. Uh, Danny thinks Daisy's going to walk right past him, but she, instead she stops and smiles at him with her perfect teeth. He felt a little tingle in his heart. Oh, no. Oh, no. This is going to be some sort of story where he stalks her or something. Something like that. I don't know. I don't know how mature this is going to get. This is a FNAF story. Let's remember that. So is it actually going to hit us in the feels and stuff? I don't know. Something hits him in the nose. 
but he ignores it as Daisy begins talking to him. He looks down at his worn tennis shoes, uh, doodled with black ink. The ink consumes all. <laughs> so, okay. Danny, she said. Wow, she actually knew his name? Yeah, Daisy? She tossed her hair over her shoulder with her hand, placed a hand on her hip. Your breakfast is ready. It was all a dream. Oh, okay. It was all a dream, yeah. So Danny blinked awake. Sorry, I'm very slow today. It is 10 a.m. I, I woke up like an hour ago. <laughs> Danny blinked awake on his, wi his twin-sized bed in his room. He spotted his M.C. Escher poster of two hands drawing each other on the wall and the stacks of graphic novels on his bookshelves. Is that a real, um, is that a real artist or, okay, or graphic novels? Oh, graphic novel. I don't know. I don't know who this is. I don't know if he's, if that, that person is real, but probably, probably is. Um, Danny sat up, rubbed at his sleepy eyes and spotted his three and a half year old little brother, Johnny, standing in the doorway of his bedroom with a plastic cup full of cereal in his hand. His mother filled his doorway next. Her brown hair was pulled back away from her full cheeks. She wore a pastel green dental assistant scrubs. Okay. Uh, Danny is eating, eating toaster tarts. He hadn't liked them since fifth grade, but his mother doesn't care. So Danny's middle child are Johnny and Bobby. Bobby is always lifting weights and flexing his muscles. <laughs> okay. So Bobby is the, is the one we don't like. Danny, on the other hand, was on the thinner side with skinny arms and legs. Like me. Uh, he'd never been into sports, and his mom always told him when he was little he spent most of the time daydreaming by himself and colouring and colouring books instead of playing with Bobby or any school friends. Some things didn't really change, he guessed. Danny grabbed a toaster tart and walked into the front room to start study their Christmas tree. Okay, Christmas time. This is around Christmas time. It was a real Douglas fir tree, sitting crookedly in the stand in front of the window. Years of handmade ornaments were hung on the branches and tangled lights were wound around it. Tinsel was thrown all over by Johnny's crazy decorative hand. Dad hadn't seen it yet. He was still travelling with his job and would likely be home right before the holiday in a couple of weeks. Johnny grabs a hold of Bobby's legs and has him speed around the house. It is a cute family. It is. Both of Danny's brothers got their dad's honey blonde hair and Danny inherited his mum's dark brown. Mum rushed into the front room with Johnny's jacket and lunchbox. Boys, that's enough. I'll be home at five. I expect you guys to get started on your homework before I get home so you're not up late getting it done. Keep an eye on Johnny till I get home. He'll be dropped off at four after speech therapy. I love speech therapy. I went to speech therapy. I still can't speak, as you can tell. <laughs> um, Danny needs to take care of Johnny. Uh, their mother is always w rushing around, which means she doesn't always have time to watch over him. Even at 15, Danny accepted that it was a lot. So yeah, I think this book series, I think this book sets a record of having all the protagonists being young. Kai was 11. Wait, Kai was 11? I did not remember that. Uh, Danny is 15. Kane, Lucio and Kelly were 17 or 18. I think it's odd that they still market this to little kids in kindergarten through book fairs. <laughs> when A, the back clearly says teen rating and B, this story. No, and B, the majority of these stories consist of young teens getting brutally killed. I feel like this would scar them. I mean, yeah, I, I in kindergarten book fairs, yeah, definitely, definitely not. But um, yeah, it, they are pretty, pretty horrible. Anyway, while his little brother has a do no wrong attitude, and his older brother talked a bunch and monopolized his brother, his, his mother, sorry. Danny is the quiet one. No way Danny actually walks around with a pencil in his ear. I get he's an artist, but I've never seen anyone actually do that. I feel like that's a thing of, um, like, architects. Like that's an architect stereotype. They just grab their pencil and, and do their blueprints and stuff. <laughs> he's also drawn trees and animals in black marker on the pocket of his pale blue backpack. Out of the way, Danny boy. Bobby's friend Tyler was picking him up in his beat-up old truck which had two rusted fenders and tyres that had seen better days. They didn't give Danny a ride. He had to walk two blocks to school in the icy cold winter. The town of Marston didn't normally get snow, maybe twice in the last 50 years as locals often shared, but this winter was especially frigid. Okay. When Danny hit the first corner, he spotted his best friend Aaron Glasgow waiting for him. 
Aaron's backpack was hooked on his shoulders and he held his flute case in his right hand. He wore dark rimmed glasses that looked strange over his long nose. The glasses were secured with a band that wrapped around his head and kept his glasses secured so he wouldn't lose them during school activities. He wore pressed khakis and knitted red sweater and a scarf that his mum likely made for him. Danny and Aaron had gravitated toward each other in preschool since they were the only ones who would sit in one place for hours instead of running around chasing each other on the playground like other kids. They begin to discuss Blake the Hero, which is a graphic novel about a loner high school named Blake Billings who has a secret persona, Hero, who helps right wrongs in the small town by using smarts. Danny wasn't even aware the newest issue is out and can't read it due to needing to stay home with Johnny after school and he hates spoilers so the topic changes to Oh No Samari, Samurais, <laughs> Samurais, uh, which Danny is also behind on. He slips all of the drawings he makes of da Daisy into her locker. Oh, oh no. Suddenly, Danny felt that little tingle in his heart and quickly turned toward the front entrance. Sure enough, Daisy is making her way down the hall. It appears that she isn't quite popular, as Danny had seen girls staring begrudgingly at her and her tattoo. Um, it feels exactly like how Devon acted about Heather in New Kid. A little bit. I, I, I get what you mean by that. But I feel like Devon was um, kind of more delusional. <laughs> Devon was just like... You know, in um in the new kid, when Devon at, at the beginning, Devon makes a um, like or tells the class about a story about uh Heather's, was it Heather? I swear it was. I don't think it was. I don't think she was called Heather. I don't. Maybe maybe she was. Um. Anyway, about her sisters getting eaten by like a bouncy castle or something. It was it was very weird. That's That whole story was weird. I hate the new kid. <laughs> she walks right past them and Aaron suddenly says hello, which causes her to look at Danny for a millisecond and Danny gets all hot and flustered. She gives Aaron a wave and walks away. Uh, Aaron did it to intentionally fuck with Danny. Aaron laughs so hard that he needs to use his inhaler. Do you really know Daisy Zayland? Danny asks his best friend. I swear Zayland... Maybe not. I, I swear Zayland was was one of the surnames in Animatronic Apocalypse. Maybe not. Maybe I'm just maybe I'm just thinking of the Z or the Z because there was a girl with beginning with Z in that story. Anyway, uh, Aaron zipped his uh, inhaler back into his pocket. Why do you say a full name like that? Daisy Zayland is so pretty. Daisy Zayland, I love her. <laughs> I have geometry, Daisy Zayland. No deal. No big deal. Danny is now freaking out. Despite Aaron saying he never really talks to her, Danny is now demanding details about her. Aaron says she's just some regular girl, maybe a bit snobby. Danny refuses to believe this. <laughs> okay. On the second day of ninth grade, he struggled to open his locker until he saw Daisy walking down the hall. When he tried again, it opened. He is now certain she is special. Daisy opens her locker and is now confused by the drawing. Danny whirled away and turned to look inside his own locker, his heart beating erratically. Stay calm, he murmured. Would she love it? He wondered. Would she take it home and pin it to her wall? Or maybe tape it to the inside of a locker? Pride filled him with the balloon at the thought. <laughs> I completely messed that last line up, but let's, let's just move on. He looks back and she's gone. She fucking crumbled it up and threw it on the floor. Ha ha ha. Oh, I knew that would happen, by the way. On one hand, as an artist, that sucks. On the other hand, though, I can totally see her thinking uh, she's being stalked. And so now the reaction is justified. Yeah, I know. I, I I get it on both sides. I guess. Well, actually, no. I don't. I don't get the crumbling up of it. I don't get it. Anyway, um, this isn't the word. This isn't the first time thing. Story said she's been sneaking her drawers, her drawings for a while now. Okay, cool. Um, so Danny's father isn't usually home because of his job. Uh, it's travel to other companies teaching how to use new corporate computer software But whenever he's home He is always patient with his three sons and listens to what they have to tell him Danny is excited for dad to come home because he wants to ask for relationship advice uh, Especially since his parents were high school sweethearts Flex on him. Yeah, no, that's not gonna happen. My dad's actual event advice Okay, okay <laughs> Uh, as they're eating, their mum's cell phone rings and Danny snatches it to talk to his dad. All three brothers desperately want to talk to him. They fight over the phone. And by fight, I mean Bobby has snatched the phone and Danny is too weak to get it back. They've established a rule that whoever gets on the phone first gets a minute with dad. 
which Bobby just broke and now mum has the phone so Danny didn't get his chance. Bobby justifies his actions because Danny cheated by not saying who was calling. That Sunday, after a load of Christmas shopping, mum surprisingly, sorry, mum surprised Danny and his brothers with a shop at Freddy Fazbear's Mega Pizzaplex for a late dinner. What's, what does that mean? Egga is a... Johnny shouted. Okay. Danny gazed about as they entered the large entertainment establishment. White, bright, li well, bright lights flashed in every direction. Let me guess. Let me guess. She is going to be there. Who? What's her name again? Um, Daisy. Yeah. Da Danny and Daisy. I, I, da Daisy is going to be at the pizza plex. 100%. Um, bright lights flashed in every direction from fun and fast rides to neon lit post posters featuring the amazing features of the pizza plex. Monty's Gator Golf, Fazza Blast, Roxy's Raceway, the Fazcade... Gift shops and more. Seems like security breaches pizza flex right now. Like, very close to security breach time. Music and game pings and bells overpowered Daisy's or Danny's senses. He smelled pepperoni pizza and something sweet and syrupy. Crowds of families swarmed the first floor, holding their little kids' hands or trying to run after them. This time, bright Christmas decorations caught his eye. Danny had never seen the pizza plex during the holidays before there were several decorated trees in every entertainment section of the massive building shiny ornaments and wreaths hung on the walls with several twinkling lights whoa danny whispered he gazed to the upper floor seeing the handrails glowing with lights and adorned with christmas wreaths he nearly ran into glamrock freddy as the character waved to everyone while wearing a santa hat danny shifted past him gazing at the shiny lightning bolt on his chest all the Pizzaplex workers were dressed as elves, wearing red vests and red hats with fake pointy ears. It was so funny and cool. That's actually kind of cute. <laughs> um, they eat, and while their mum and Johnny go to the little kids' play area, Danny and Bobby were given a handful of tokens and head to the arcade. Danny uses them to fill up all of his tokens fast. No, wait. Oh my gosh, I'm so bad at speaking. Danny uses them all up his tokens fast. Wait, no, 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 it's not me, it's you, it's you. <laughs> the sentence is wrong. Danny uses them all up his tokens fast. Okay, whatever. Danny uses all the tokens up fast. Danny spots... Okay. I guess, what happened? What happened? Where am I? <laughs> oh my god. Oh, here we are. Sorry. Danny spots a couple holding hands, which makes him think of Daisy. He remembers that Bobby had a short-term girlfriend and tries asking him for advice. Bobby knows he's about to ask a girl because he's seen him drawing in his sketchbook. Ugh. Her name's a flower, right? Rose or Lily or whatever? Daisy, Danny narrowed his eyes. Bobby tells him to just go up and talk to her, but Danny doesn't know how, especially since she doesn't notice him at all. Bobby tells him to get more confident and tells him something that girls like. Presents, he said, with certainty. Give the girl a nice gift and you're instantly on their radar. Danny po tries pointing out the drawings he gave her, but Bobby tells him just sneaking it to her isn't the right approach. Bobby rolled his eyes. Come on, you, you have to talk to the girl, Danny. It's kind of acquired when you like someone and you want them to like you back. Bobby looked around and spotted something across from the arcade. Hey, look over there. Danny swiveled his head in the direction the other boy, the other brother. Oh my god. His brother pointed. <laughs> there was no other in that. There was a Santa's gift plex area that had opened up for the holidays. Oh, I would love to see like a Christmas DLC, even if it's nothing much, but like just just make all of the animatronics wear Christmas stuff in, in Security Breach, and I would love it. Um Bobby tells him to go get a gift for Daisy, and as he makes his way, hello families! The Mega Pizza Plex will be closing in 15 minutes, the loudspeaker announced. <laughs> it's a very weird way to say that. Anyway, um, Danny only has $5 and she is there. So Danny speedwalked into Santa's Gift Plex and instantly became mesmerized with the surroundings. Bells were jingling to holiday songs. Roxanne Wolf stood at the entrance, waving to everyone who walked in and out. The animatronic wore a Santa hat and had white fur on the edges of a red outfit. Everywhere Danny looked, he saw a bright red and green decorations with hints of winter flakes and frosted glass. There were special booths spread out in the great room. Some were lined with stuffed dolls and action figures of Glamrock Freddy, Glamrock Chica, Gl Montgomery Gator and Roxanne Wolf. Chocolate candies and cakes were 
uh, displayed that looked too perfect to eat. Christmas lights hung from the ceiling and little trees were placed all along the walls. There was a poster booth and a t-shirt and a sweatshirt booth, all with the Mega Pizzaplex logo. Purses and backpacks were hung in one area. In another, there were cups, posters, plastic toys of all different colours and magical balls with funny characters in them. Wait. <laughs> Wait. Magical balls with funny characters in them? I'm assuming that means, um, like, the, the ones that you shake and it's, like, snow and stuff. What are they called? I, f I forget what they're called. The ones you shake and then it, it makes it snow. Anyway, those. I'm assuming it's those, but that could be a funny reference to somnophobia. <laughs> the dream orb or the dream sphere, sorry. That, that, that would be funny. Gifts recommended for your mum and dad, such as candles, books... Uh, scarves and socks were in a different place. Are you ready to meet this story's antagonists? Uh-oh, uh-oh. So, Danny spots some kids surrounding a booth in the far corner and goes to check it out. The sign above was written in neon letters, gift wrapping. A large window of frosted glass stood as a barrier while a present was being decorated with wrapping paper and tied with big frilly bows set upon a glass table as if by magic. There wasn't an elf or a helper involved at all and no one was holding the present. The colourful designs on the wrapping paper spread across the paper with special ink that seemed to flow like water. The bows were spiralling and spinning like twirling dancers. The gift was set on a glass table and the paper was magically wrapping the box by itself and being sliced away to fit the gift perfectly. The kids, uh, the kids there say they just keep buying small things and sticking them in to see them get wrapped. No one knows what's coming. He then hears a girl shout next to him. Wow, this is so funny. Ha ha ha. It's all so bad. Next to the gift wrapping booth, behind the same frosted glass, a girl had her arms inserted into two holes in the glass that connected to a large iron vat that was secured behind the frosted barrier. The outside of the structure was painted bright red and wrapped with, flowing, with glowing lights. It was shaped like something he'd seen in a history class. An iron lung, which is a long, narrow device that could hold a person's body to help them breathe or something. Okay. Danny tilted his head, wondering what was happening to the kid. Then the red light surrounding the iron lung flashed to green, and the girl pulled her arms out to reveal that her arms were painted with colourful tattoos. Seeing the tattoos, Danny thinks Daisy would love it, but he first wants to know how the machine works. Five minutes, families. Please finish up your activities and slowly make your way to the exit. Danny gets a devious idea. He texts Bobby, saying he's running late in the bathroom. As everyone leaves and Roxanne Wolf has her back turned, Danny hides behind a Christmas tree next to the gift wrapping booth. The glass of the booth is actually thick plastic and he pushes past it to get inside the booth. A gift is currently being wrapped and he watches as and he watches and gets closer to see how. There's quick movement. He gasped. It wasn't magic at all, but the littlest robots he'd ever seen. Oh no. The bots had to be the size of a grain of rice. I'm thinking of the cookie bots from Despicable Me. I know they're not the size of a grain of rice, but similar. Uh, they seemed to fly through the air and they had no feet. Uh-oh. The, uh, they fly through the air? Oh, God. They appeared to be the colour of the frosted glass, so that was why it was hard to see them from far away. He couldn't see their hands as they moved into a blur of motion, working quickly to wrap, colour and draw. Is this going to be like a sea bonnie situation? I feel like it could be. If he had his own bots, he could be tattooed with different designs every single day. And it would be his own little secret. He would have... Oh, they make the tattoos, I see. Uh, he would have something really cool in common with Daisy Zayland. She would have to notice him for sure. He hears keys and footsteps, so he quickly grabs a few and stuffs them in his pockets. He makes it out of the pizza plex with the tiny little bots, and as he gets in the car, he feels a sting on his left leg. This can only go wrong. They're going to drill into his heart or something. Bobby sees Danny empty-handed and looks disappointed. But little does he know, he had the best gift in his pocket that would literally change his life. Literally. <laughs> Back at home, he reaches into his pockets. His pocket was empty. He's super defeated and goes to bed upset. At lunch, Aaron has to stay in class for a makeup test, leaving no one to sit with Danny. Now even more upset, he makes his way to the library to draw in his sketchbook. At a far corner table, he spotted Daisy Zayland. Instantly, he felt that funny tingle in his heart. He was sitting alone, turning pages in a large book. This is the halfway point, apparently. Oh, wow. 
Uh, the beginning is a lot of exposition and Danny going nuts for Daisy. Okay. Da Danny's a -land. Okay. So it's going to start getting good, I think, now. As he makes his way over, he notices kids gawking at him. He wondered why. Did he have a funny look on his face or something? Did he forget to comb his hair? Did he have a new zit? Monty sure would love it if he had one. <laughs> True. He gets closer to da Daisy and sees that she's reading a tattoo book. Why is he so addicted to tattoos? Anyway. Uh, he slipped the graphite pencil back onto his ear. Hi. She glanced up with an uninterested look on her face and looked back down at her book. Hi, she answered. Go on, say something else. Like what? That is inner Monty speaking. Uh, he stared and stared until it finally dawned on him. The tattoo book. He was such a dweeb. Um, he said. What tattoo do you like best? She looked up and blinked at him. Um, in the book, he babbled. Uh, are you thinking of getting another one? I mean... I, I saw the little star you have on, on, on your wrist, which is fantastic, by the way. And I figured you were wanting to get another one, which is understandable. Um, yeah. At first, she, he thinks she might ignore him. But then she points to a small, simple heart at the bottom page. It was very important for me to know her fingernails was purple. Thank you, book. Oh, no. <laughs> Glitch trap possession. She is the mimic. I think this will be my next one. Maybe on her side. Maybe on my side, sorry. She pointed to above her lip. Le hip. Danny is filled with joy. Daisy is actually talking to him. She asks if he likes tats. And when he nods, they introduce themselves. Okay. Danny says that's where he wants his tattoo as well. And that's when the pain starts. Oh. Then they introduce themselves. I'm Danny Daisy. Perspiration lined his head as the pain in his side increased. What's happening? Yeah, I know. Do you have... Do I do I have a class with you or, or something? Danny attempts to communicate more, but the pain is just too much. He runs into the boy's bathroom to examine, to examine his side. Danny grabbed some toilet paper and dabbed at the blood. Something was cut into his skin, he discovered. He looks in the mirror and sees, carved into his skin, about the size of a quarter, was a small heart. The bots... Danny thought as he hurried to his locker. It had to be the bots. There was no other way for a heart to be suddenly engraved into his skin. But there was some post uh, but there was supposed to be a drawing on his skin, not carving into his skin. I mean <laughs> Do you know how tattoos work? <laughs> do you know how tattoos Oh, it's actually like carving Oh, it's 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 you can like feel it. Oh, that's horrible. Uh what the heck was going on? Uh, he had no idea. Daisy approached him, confused on why, she, why he ran off. She notices the blood on his shirt. Ouch, did you cut yourself or something? She asks if he needs to go to the nurse, but Danny refuses. What's the matter with you? She frowned at him. You're acting really weird. Danny doesn't want her to think he's weird. Reluctantly, he shifted his sweatshirt aside and lifted his shirt to reveal the little heart carved in his skin. This was so embarrassing. Daisy stared at his side for what seemed like eternity. What? How? Then her lips curved. That is really cool. Yeah, I'm super impressed by your skill. The lines are clean. The heart is perfect. And you did it so fast. She met his eyes, and it was like she was truly seeing him in a new light. He felt her interest and her excitement for his little heart. I know what's going to happen. Danny walked home after school in a daze as he stared at the cell phone in his hand. He actually had Daisy Zeland's number. She gave him his number. Now they could text. They could talk about body art. I know what's gonna happen and it's terrible. Danny is crazy over her, right? He will do anything to get with her. And because of that, he's going to cut himself in any way all over his body so that she will be fascinated with his body art and she will be fascinated with him. Maybe he'll even cut her. Oh my god. It's going to turn into a psychopath because of a girl. Like Sergio's Lucky Day. I think Sergio's Lucky Day is a good, um, is a good like, reference point of, like, where do I think this is going to go? I think this could be the better Sergio's Lucky Day. But we'll see. We'll see. I think Sergio's Lucky Day was a, a, a pretty good story, actually. So, we will see. 
He hoped that eventually she would be his first girlfriend. He left Aaron behind. Poor guy had to run to catch up. Aaron is shocked to hear they talked. Aaron shook his head in disbelief as they walked home. I don't know, I'm still stuck on the fact that she gave you her number. Uh, he's only half paying attention to Aaron's discussion on the way home as he's trying to comprehend that Daisy gave him her number and that the bots were still on him. Once home, he rushes to his room and examines his pants. This time he noticed two tiny perfect holes in the lining of his pocket where he put the bots. The circles looked as if they had been cut. Cut. Danny remembers how the bots were trimming the wrapping paper. Could there be two types of mini bots in the gift wrapping booth? He wondered. One type for drawing and colouring and another kind for the cutting. He takes out a magnifying glass and examines its legs. On its right thigh were two tiny marks, big enough for the bots the size of a grain of rice to slip through. The bots had cut into his body. Oh no, I actually don't like this. I feel sick. <laughs> the bots were inside of him. And let me, let me guess, they're inside of his heart now. They're going to puncture a hole in his heart. His heart pounded hard in his chest, and his face suddenly felt very hot. His hand went to his forehead. He's freaking out. Out of all the bots, he took the wrong ones. He took the cutters instead of the painters. Oh, I get it. I get it. Okay. And now they're inside his body, able to cut into anything. Uh, wow. I think I'm going to throw up. <laughs> okay, where is this going? And he didn't know how he was going to fix it. His mind was whirling with uncertainty and fear. What was he going to do? How do you get tiny robots out your body? He looked it up online. Body scan, x-ray, surgery. He decides to call his dad. He obviously can't say what's wrong, but speaking to him helps make him feel that things will work out. Unfortunately, his dad doesn't pick up. Hi, dad. Um, it's Danny. I just wanted to talk to you. But I guess you're working. Could you call me back? I can't wait till you come home. I miss you. Okay, love you. Bye. Um, Danny blinked awake to see his mom leaning over a bed. Eleanor? <laughs> her brown eyes looked worried. He could smell her rose perfume. Are you feeling okay, hun? Dad said you left a message on this voicemail. Is everything okay? He rubbed his eyes. Did he miss Dad's call? He reached for his cell phone on his side table. There was no missed call or a message from his dad. Why didn't he call me? Danny said, grog groggily. You know he's busy with work, hun. He checked in with me this morning and mentioned your call. She felt his head with her hand. You don't have a fever. Is it your stomach again? Danny said he's fine and that he'll go back to school. Or he'll go to school. So his dad didn't get a chance to call him back, Danny realised. Like mum said, he was busy with work, as usual. He walks to school with Aaron listening to him talking about the graphic novels he still has yet to read. Aaron notices that Danny is acting off. He shrugged uncomfortably. Kind of miss my dad. Aaron understands what Danny is going through since his dad spends long days away from home on business trips too. And it's so close to Christmas. But on the upside, you'll see him soon, yeah? Aaron gave him an encouraging smile. Um, Aaron is the best character in this book. That's cool. At school, Danny is approached by Daisy, who got some new body art magazines and wants to look over them with Danny at lunch. Daisy Zayland actually wanted to hang out with him at school. This was amazing. He thought of Aaron. Oh, he would understand. He reasoned as he took his cell phone to text him that he was busy at lunch and that he'd see him after school. Oh, I see. So uh, she's showing him tattoos and asking if he wants any of them. She's showing him tattoos she'd ha like to have. The truth was Danny could get any of these tattoos, but they would be etched instead of inked. Wonder what Daisy would think about that. She is girl, he reasoned. So she might gross out. What? <laughs> she is girl, he reasoned, so she might gross out. What? What? I'm, I'm a little bit confused there. Weird comment to make. Yeah, this is a little bit weird. <laughs> Fables from Santa's gift plex. <laughs> That's great. That's actually funny. Um, you draw, he blinked and realised Daisy knew nothing about him. She didn't even know it had been him who drew the pictures of her that she found in her locker. Maybe it's best that she didn't know that. Since he saw, since she, since he saw her crumple up the last one, he decides not to tell her. Yeah, I like to draw. I should have known that with drawing pencil on your ear. She smiled at him, and Danny felt a warm glow in his chest. Could you draw the tattoo you would get if you could? Danny nodded. Sure, I could. 
Daisy wants him to do that and show it to her tomorrow. We cut to Danny and Aaron walking home from school. Then Hank Mason hit Charlie Cooper in the nose with his clarinet by accident, but the entire class started busting up laughing. Laughing. <laughs> laughing. Ah! Uh, <laughs> I need to go to speech therapy again. Mrs. Jimenez was not amused though. Oh, and Katie Howard freaked out when a spider crawled across, uh, crawled out of her violin case. Um, why did these kids know <laughs> everyone's last names? I only knew my friend Aaron's last name. It wasn't until I got my yearbook that I learnt the rest. Really? I knew everybody's last names at school. Genuinely, I knew everybody in my in my year. Anyway, also yeah, this story is hitting different for me. Main character is an artist with a friend named Aaron. That's me. Wow. <laughs> um, how could Aaron ever think she was snobby? Something tells me this relationship's going to fall apart. Aaron knows something we don't. Yeah, that, I think that's probably it. Aaron probably knows something. Um, he plopped onto his bed and started to draw a grizzly bear. He had always admired bears since he had to do a report on them in fifth grade. That's that's true. Bears aren't ex extinct right now. That's strange. They were big and strong and independent. Something that Danny wished he would be someday. Minus the having to hunt for his food and shelter. Midsummer be like. Um, <laughs> he draws a grizzly bear in a graphic novel style with thick lines and no shading. He actually thinks it's one of his best. Um... Why is there so much back and forth? What is going on? Um, okay. Where am I? I do want a tattoo like this. Probably on my shoulder. As soon as he said it, his stomach pitched. Wait, I mean, one day. Not now. Too late. A sharp cut pierced his skin on his right shoulder. He yelped as the bot sliced into him. <laughs> Yowch. He falls onto the floor, holding his arm as it begins to bleed. Please. No, I didn't mean it. Stop. I guess you could say he's in agony. It's true. So the bots are only going to get stronger. Um, <laughs> oh, I see. So, so Cube right here. Uh, this is Cube, right? Yeah, Cube was like, I guess you could say he's in agony. But it actually says that in the book. He thought he was going to pass out from the agony. <laughs> it said it go nuts. Um, okay. He lays there for a bit upset that he might mess up again before going to examine the tattoo. He lifted his eyebrows because if it had been a real tattoo, it would have looked really good. But as a blood injury, it was a painful mess. I have to be more careful with what I say. <laughs> Who the hell is beeping? Uh, he quickly cleans off the blood stains in his shirt and throws it in the wash right before his mother gets home. The next day, Daisy approaches Danny while Aaron is still there. We have fourth period together, Aaron told her. Oh, really? Daisy shrugged. So, Danny, did you make the drawing we talked about? Danny shows it to her. And Daisy thinks it would look great as a tattoo. A tattoo? Aaron interrupted with a scrunched up face. I think you have a while till that happens. Anyway, why would you want to mess up your body like that? Daisy rolled her eyes. Tattooing is a form of arti artistic self-expression, Eric. I told you, it's Aaron. <laughs> Aaron argues that the tattoos are painful, but Daisy says it's only painful for those who can't handle pain. Yeah, there's, there's a dark side to Daisy, man. Aaron laughed. Danny used to cry when he scraped his knee. Maybe, maybe Daisy is genuinely, genuinely like Eleanor or something. <laughs> like, something like that. Like, trying to, like, she did this. She is appearing in front of Danny. A little bit like help wanted in the fact that she's kind of like catfishing in a way. Where it's kind of like, uh, he, she is his perfect idea of a human being. Um... Or something like that. And so then she's gotten him into this mess or something. Anyway. Um, why would you want to mess up your body like that? It's, it's a form of artistic self-expression, Eric. I told you it's Aaron. Uh, only for those who can handle pain. Uh, or only for those who can handle pain. Um, Aaron laughed. Danny used to cry when he scraped his knee. There's no way he could handle the pain of getting a real tattoo. That's what you think, Alec. <laughs> Daisy smiled at Danny as if hinting at their little secret. Aaron, Aaron grumbled. Daisy gave Aaron a look. Aaron is then upset to learn that da Danny was in the library with Daisy talking about tattoos instead of at lunch with him yesterday. Yes, we hang out together at lunch now. Um, 
just the two of us, and we talk all about tattoos, something you're obviously not interested in, Alvin. <laughs> this is so funny. This is great. Aaron. Aaron corrected again, absently. Pointing a thumb at Daisy. Is that true, Danny? You want to hang out with her at lunch and talk about tattoos? I guess. I mean, I want to hang out with both. Fine. Aaron pulled out his inhaler and took a puff. Do whatever you want. I got something to do anyway. Danny tries to go after, but Danny, but Daisy tells him to let Aaron go and just see him later. Danny feels bad, but he would want to, see, but he would see Aaron after school and try to explain how good it was to have Daisy want to talk and spend time with him. Yeah, he's tunnel visioning right now. She places a uh, hand on his shoulders, which causes him to recoil in pain. Daisy is at first confused, but then realizes what's going on and tells him to meet at the trash field. Oh, it's, it, it, they meant track field. Uh, the trash, uh, the track field during lunch, so he could see, so she can see. Uh, but trash field is so funny. I'm keeping that typo. Fair enough. Oh my gosh, Danny, did it hurt? Um, Daisy stared in awe at the rawness of the shoulder he showed her far off in the corner of the school's track field. Did it hurt? The painful incident flashed back through his mind. Yeah, a little. This is so awesome. How are you doing this? The lines are just so perfect and precise. I can no longer tell if she thinks these are tattoos or if she's just fucked up. <laughs> There's a difference between putting ink in your body and literal holes and cuts. I... Yes, but if you don't look close... Like, I've never seen one, so... I don't know. I, I don't know. There's... Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> she complains about having to wait a bit... bit she considers a real... Um, uh, she now considers her and Danny friends and says friends don't tell secrets but Danny knows she's not going to believe the truth behind his tattoos so he says he'll do it later if it was me you wouldn't be able to stop me from getting more it's such a drag I have to wait for my parents to get back from their business trips or when they aren't too busy to take me her cheeks flushed pink well she was my nanny since I was little and she still plays uh, she still stays with me when my parents travel her name is Miss Gladys I mean I tell my parents I'm old enough to stay home on my own, uh, but they feel better with her staying with me. Anyways, that was why they finally caved and let me get a tattoo. They wanted it to be okay with me that they travel all the time. They promised to let me get another one. Her parents are stopping to go skiing without her on Christmas? Yeah, that's, that's terrible. I only was so wrong about her. She wasn't snobby. She didn't just have a lot she just didn't have a lot of friends and she hardly even had a parents home with her danny understood how much she missed his dad when he was away to have both parents gone so often had to be really rough maybe danny was daisy's only friend he didn't really see her talking to many other kids daisy looked at him a little shyly for the first time i mean at least i have my interest in tattoos to keep me busy and now i have you to talk with right a feeling of pride bloomed in his chest um she smiled great let's think of something you can get next Danny hesitated, but only for a second. Yeah, see, she's she is she is driving forward with this. Like, I think she might genuine like she might be faking that she thinks it's tattoos. I think she genuinely knows it's hurting him, but she's like psychopathic or something. She, there, there's something about her that's a little bit sus, I think, but I could be wrong. Danny hesitated, but only for a second. He told her he wanted to take a break, but considering his type of body art made her happy, he was willing to get her a little more. To help her keep her mind off her parents not coming home for Christmas. Um, I do feel bad for Daisy, but she's putting her own interests over Danny's. That's true. But also remember that, like, Danny kind of started this, right? By by saying, I have an interest in tattoos. So, like, I guess if they were to start getting into a proper, like, a proper, proper friendship and, and like, relationship, then... Yeah, she would have to ask, what are your other interests? Because, like, they, they do share a common interest, but also they need to get into each other's things. But she doesn't know that tattoos aren't actually really an interest to him. If you, do you know what I'm saying? I know that you have to kind of be aware of each other's interests, but right now I understand kind of why. Anyway, um, Danny's next skin design was a, of a hummingbird because Daisy liked them so much. I love hummingbirds. Uh, he prepared this time by stashing old towels and garbage bags under his bed in his room for easier cleanup. Yeah, he's going to start enjoying it. Oh, no. 
Unfortunately, the pain wasn't getting easier to endure. In fact, it felt even worse with each cutting the bots performed. His heart felt like it wanted to pound right out of his chest. His body would tremble and sweat as the blood dripped out of his body. And when the cutting stopped, he was super exhausted. He hadn't been able to get up to patch himself for at least 15 minutes. Despite this pain, he endures it for Daisy's sake. He's going to get obsessed with it, yeah. Being with Daisy made him feel noticed and wanted, something he hadn't felt in a while, not since Johnny was born. He knew his parents loved him, but being with Daisy felt different. She made him feel needed in some weird way, and she made his nerves tingle whenever, she was with, whenever he was with her. He'd never felt like that before, and he wanted to hold on to the feeling as long as he could. He meets her by their special spot in the back corner of the track field again. Doing this makes him feel like Blake Billings from his graphic novels with an alternate persona. He has the hummingbird etched onto his other shoulder. I'm guessing from chat reactions that we've already forgotten the part of the book where he described Blake. Yeah. <laughs> um, th that was like a very short moment before that, that I don't think matters that much now. But Danny, I love it. You're the coolest. No one has ever done something so unique for me before. She calls him the coolest friend she's ever had. For a girl like Daisy to praise him it was like catching a rainbow. Well, now the wording makes it sound like she's aware of cuts. Hmm, yeah. I, 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 it, it's a grey area. I don't, I don't really know if she knows the tattoos or cuts, but, but she does say they're unique, right? And, and that's something like, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe maybe she meant, like, personal to her, but I don't know. Um, do you think you can do one on me? Oh, no. She asked out the blue. Okay, reading it back, I believe in the tattoo. She's just asking to give her one. Um, okay. Um, oh, fine. Daisy looked away at the track field and crossed her arms. Be that way. Um, oh, because Danny said no. Uh, there was a moment of silence as she glanced at her nails. Well, I have to go. I forgot I had something to do. I forgot I told someone I would meet with them. You're meeting someone else? Danny comes up with the excuse that he's just not ready to do it on other people yet, since it's hard doing it on himself. You just have to wait a little while, he fibbed. He didn't really know what else to say, but he didn't want her to walk away upset with him. He finally had Daisy's Aylan's attention. He would do anything to keep her as a friend. If Daisy didn't want to be his friend anymore, it would crush him into tiny bits. Foreshadowing. But when you are ready, let me know. I want to be the first one to get your work, okay? Okay, let's talk about your next one. Yeah, um, so who else were you going to meet? Oh, just some kid. No one important. Oh, I know what's happening. He's going to feel like she's been cheating on her. And therefore, he's going to keep cutting himself or something like that. Oh, this is actually, this is awful. This is awful. Um, <laughs> Greg. Uh, we cut to Aaron and Danny walking home. Aaron, I know you're upset about me spending my lunches with Daisy. I told you to do whatever you want, Aaron muttered. Aaron calls Daisy his girlfriend. No! Oh, oh, I, sorry, I thought Aaron was, um, was Danny. What? No, no, Daisy's not my girlfriend. Hopefully one day. Why are you so into tattoos all of a sudden? I mean, you like art, but you like graphic novels and illustrations. Then Daisy Zayland comes along and you change what you like. I haven't changed, I'm still me. I just like tattoos now, Aaron shook his head. She's just using you. True. She doesn't have any friends because she's so stuck up and everyone around school thinks so, except you. She's using you, so she's not such a loner. And once someone better or cooler comes along, she'll dump you. That's not true, Aaron. Daisy isn't like that. And just because I hang out with her doesn't mean you're not my best friend anymore. Aaron didn't say anything as they stopped around the corner where they split up. So, I'll see you tomorrow? Danny asked him hesitantly. Aaron was staring down at the ground. Maybe. Then he turned off and took off for home. Oh, it isn't true what he said about Daisy, Danny told himself. If not you, it's not using someone when the person wants to hang out with you too, right? No, that's not how it works. That's literally not how it works. That is the whole point of getting used. Like if you want to hang out with someone, then brilliant. But the other person might be using you for something else, not to hang out with you. You, you have different perspectives of this. You have different motivations of why you are hanging out and that's how you get um how you, that's how you get used uh like a fiddle yeah that's how you get played like a fiddle there we go <laughs> um where are we he gets a text on his phone from daisy she wanted to draw him uh, she wanted him to draw a tattoo of a black cat danny smiled as he headed home anything for you daisy danny drew the cat design in a sketchbook this time 
he shaded the drawing in with all black. Daisy will love this one, he thought, satisfied. It's like with each body modification, Daisy was drawn more and more to him. Uh, more and more to him and he to her. Connecting them in a way he never thought was possible. It was like he couldn't get enough time with her. He could feel himself wanting to please her more every day. His mother knocks on the door and is pleased to learn that Danny is doing his own laundry. Danny spots a, a drop of blood on the floor, but his mother doesn't see it. He nearly got caught, especially when his mother patted his shoulders, making him nearly cringe. The carvings aren't healed. Um, he was asking me for advice. Oh, sorry. At dinner, their dad calls and Bobby tells him about Danny's lunch. Danny's embarrassed and tries denying it. He was asking me for advice, wanted to know how to get her to notice him. So being a good big brother, I told him. Oh, really? You're an expert, are you, Bobby? Mum asked with a smile in her voice. You remember that I had a girlfriend in ninth grade, Nancy Dawson? Hmm. Lasted a week, as I recall, Dad said, also with a slight lilt in his voice. <laughs> Danny kept denying it because he wanted to be a one-on-one -on -one with his dad, but Bobby had ruined it. Danny is pissed and storms off, going into his room. Uh, I, I want this cat on my stomach. The bots got to work immediately. The cutting was even worse. Make it stop! Make it stop! This, this is actually kind of getting to me. I'm not, like, super against gore, but I don't know something about this one. I'm actually, like, cringing at the thought, so it eventually stops, and there's a lot of blood. I feel like I might be hyping this up too much. Like, I feel like I wouldn't normally be bothered by this, so maybe it's the context of it all, the reason he's doing all this. Something was seriously wrong. He lifts his shirt, and a red blob falls onto his lap. That's actually gross. Oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to retch. <laughs> the bots had cut out an entire piece of flesh from his stomach. That's because he said it, it was blacked out. Oh, that's actually horrible. The flesh was thin and flabby. Oh, no. Too far, he murmured as he grew lightheaded. I've gone too far. He compares it to using a cookie cut on his stomach. Ch <laughs> I'm okay, he whispered. I can handle this. I just went a little too far this time. Lesson learned. The next morning, Aaron doesn't join him when walking to school. Why couldn't Aaron understand how Daisy made him feel? How could she give him... How she gave him so much of her attention and admiration, something he rarely got from anyone else? Yeah, Danny didn't know if it was only for a special body art from the bots, but still, he didn't care. Um... Wow, okay, okay, cool. We have a good tennis pages left. Uh, sorry if it begins to slower. The story's starting giving me the same empty feeling I got when B7 was initially read. B7 was was horrible as well, but like this is this is on another level. Like B7 was sad, emotional. This is just horrible. I just feel awful. I feel gross right now. Um, yeah, all Danny cares about is being with Daisy because it makes him feel good, and he'll make amends with Aaron later. Danny, look, she told him excited. It's a body art expo in town. Can you believe it? We have to go. Danny, she said suddenly, starting his face. You're so pale. Yeah, it's from... I know, and it's cool, Danny. It just shows how dedicated you are to body art. I really admire this about you. So, did you draw that cat tat? He shows her the drawing. Can't wait till you get that one on you. He laughed nervously. Uh, yeah, can't wait. Anything for you, Daisy? The excuse he uses to go to the expo is that he's hanging out with Aaron. His mother notices that he's pale, but he blames it on the sun not being out. When he looked at himself in the mirror that morning, he was in shock. He hardly recognised himself. His body was carved up in four places with different designs that were still healing with red and itchy scabs. There was even bruising around some of the recent designs. His face was super pale, and he had some dark circles under his eyes. His cheeks and gut looked sunken in, or sucking in. He thinks about telling Daisy he can't do it anymore, but then thought, uh, another thought pops into his head. Then she won't be your friend anymore. Get out of your head! <laughs> oh my gosh. Why am I crying? <laughs> Why is there a tear in my eye? Okay. Mom gets a phone call and learns that their dad is coming home early. Today, actually. Danny is torn between his dad and the expo. If he disappointed Daisy, she'd be so mad at him. She might not even be able to speak to him again. Panic clawed on his gut at the idea. No, he couldn't disappoint her. He didn't even want to think about not having Daisy in his life. He was her only friend after all. In a way, as it was as if she only had Danny to depend on. Even though he wanted to go with his family, he'd been able to see his dad when they both got home. Daisy only had her nanny to go to home to. 
So despite not having seen his father for three weeks, he tells his mother that he'll be spending time with Aaron instead. Although hesitant, she agrees to let him go. There you are, Daisy shouted at him after he ran through the parking lot to get to the main entrance of the building. I was beginning to think you were standing me up. No, no, never. This is going to be so cool, Danny. I'm really excited. I kept thinking about it all night. So did I, Danny thought. All he could think about was being with her. They hold hands and Danny gets ecstatic. Okay. Daisy's POV? Why are we getting Daisy's POV? Okay. Daisy scanned everywhere inside the large conference center. She had never been to the Body Art Expo before and there was so much, so much excitement, so much creative energy. An actual punk rock band played loud music on a stage. People of all ages walked around, some with tattoos on their arms and necks and some even on their faces and shaved heads. She was mesmerized, impressed. One day, she might have her entire body tattooed. She wondered what her parents would think about that. They probably wouldn't care, though. They were always busy with their jobs and doing fun, grown-up things. It was like they didn't have time for Daisy at all. Who cared, anyway? Look where she was. She was doing what made her happy for a change. This was almost the greatest day of her life. It would have been even more wonderful if she was actually 18 and could get a tattoo instead of depending on her parents' permission. One day. Since she can't get any tattoos there... She instead looks at the art itself, which the artists are promoting. Danny cleared his throat, but Daisy ignored him. Couldn't he, couldn't he see she was having a serious, mature conversation here? When he cleared his throat, she turned to him again. Danny, I'm really thirsty. Could you get me a soda? She knew Danny was always trying to please her. At first, that's why she hung around him. And for the cool and different body art, he was able to do it himself. But she found out he was a really nice friend to talk to, too. He offers to have her come with but she decides to stay with the artist instead. See, with this, Danny needs to realize he doesn't need to be someone different to be with Daisy. He just needs to be himself and talk about his own, um, his own hobbies and stuff like that. And if Daisy isn't prepared to talk about his hobbies, then she isn't good enough for him, right? And that that's the whole, that's a, like a big moral of this story, I think. Like, obviously, there's, the moral here is, is don't, don't do the, this stuff. Like, this is awful in every way possible. But, like, I, I feel like the moral underneath this is kind of like, you know, people aren't good enough for you if they don't care about your interests, um, even if you care about yours. Like, anyway. Um, back to Danny's POV. The spacing of the words in the next paragraph are weird. Obviously, I cannot replicate that through text, just an observation of the book itself. Okay. Probably nothing, but yeah. Danny steps forward, or Danny's steps slowed. Why did she want to talk with him so much? It was actually their first in official outing together, and she was giving all her attention to someone else. Let me guess, she has a boyfriend. That familiar feeling of being a nobody came unnoticed, came back into full force like a ton of bricks. He'd thought Daisy was different. He'd thought they'd had a good relationship, one that was growing every day. He understood her. He kept doing the skin designs because that was what she wanted. He knew how she felt being ignored by her parents. He was the one who hung out with her, who became her only friend. Had Aaron uh, been right about her? Had Daisy just been using him until someone better came along? His heart felt like it was literally breaking. He hands her the soda and listens in on the conversation. Um, how did you choose... Sorry, how did you choose all these tattoos on your arms? I wanted each tat to mean something. I didn't want to be one of those kids who gets tats just to have them, you know? <laughs> That's funny. That's so cool. That's how I feel too. Something snaps in Daisy. Or Danny, sorry. Danny had lost her in a blink of an eye. What are you going to get next? Danny asked him. Daisy asked him, sorry. That was what she always asked Danny. She asked the tattoo artist, not Danny. I was a bit confused too. Right, yeah, yeah, there's two, yeah, because this is a tattoo place, uh, an expo. Uh, you know what I want next? Danny asked rather loudly, interrupting the conversation. I want all of your designs. Um, the tattoo artist scoffed. You couldn't afford it, kid. Sudden pain shoots through Danny's arm and another in his leg. He's bleeding all over. Oh, I forgot about that. I forgot about that. Oh my god, I thought he was just going to take the designs go home and then say, I want this one, I want this one, and do it to himself, and that would be the end of the story. But no, it's going to happen right there, because he just said, I want all of your designs. No! <laughs> oh my gosh, okay. 
A sudden pain shoots through Danny's arm and another in his leg. He's bleeding all over. When one tattoo finished, another started on his chest. Daisy's eyes widened as she watched second sections of his clothes begin to bloom with red. Daisy is confused. She shook her head as horror played across her features. Danny? Isn't this what you want? Danny reached out, a hand dripping with blood. Daisy's eyes widened. She turned and ran. Daisy ran wildly through the crowd. She didn't understand what was happening with Danny. All she knew was that she completely freaked out. Maybe if she did... Um, wait, she's looking for a place to hide. Maybe if she did, Danny would give up and just go home. She peered over her shoulder, but Danny was still after her. She goes into an area with a sign that says no trespassing. She eventually reaches a locked pair of doors. Danny is stumbling down a hall, uh, down the hall, a bloody mess. What's wrong with him? Someone open the door, she cried. Please. Daisy, stop, Danny yelled at her. She eventually manages to get the door to open, finding herself in a little office. Daisy, he moaned from behind the door. A tear ran down her cheek. She was so scared. She watched. She wanted her mum, her dad and Mrs. Gladys. She locked the door. Don't run away. He tapped on the wood. Tap, tap, tap. Please, Daisy. She yelled him to go away. Daisy, open the door. He begins to cry. I didn't mean for this to happen. I just... She steps closer to the door to hear him better. Liked you so much. I wanted you to feel the same. This is tragic. I tried to get you to notice me with the drawings in your locker. That had been him? Daisy silently questioned. He really liked me all this time? Then, with the skin designs you liked so much. Daisy, Danny goes silent. Daisy doesn't know what to do. She thinks about getting him medical help. Gosh, she never had to worry about someone else before. She liked to act like she knew it all. But she knew she didn't know everything. She was just a kid. Gosh, she really killed the tone of this entire paragraph by starting it with gosh. <laughs> she opens the door to a pile of blood. She holds back a scream. As she tries to look for Danny, there's a blood trail leading down the hallway. Danny was obviously sick. Yeah, she was scared, but he was her friend. She needed to help him, somehow. She follows the blood trail, which are drips of blood and a few bloody footprints as well as smeared handprints. Eventually, she comes across a dim hallway where she finds Danny's shoes. Danny, I'm sorry, she called out. Um, I won't run anymore. I, I just got a little scared, that's all. Where are you? She steps slowly down the walkway. We should get you home, to your mom, so you can help, okay? Her foot hits something, folded over. It's a strange, pinkish and off-white colour. She flips it over. It was in the shape of a daisy. That's funny. Daisy blinked, oddly flattered. Um... <sighs> wow, you had to kill the mood. <laughs> why was it say Kelly? Kelly, why did you write that sentence? Again, I feel this mood. Oh, Kelly Para. I thought you meant Kelly from the epilogues. Um, Daisy blinked, oddly flattered. Yeah, that's, that is a, so I'm going to say it straight, a fucked up sentence right there. Daisy blinked, oddly flattered. Holy God. Okay, not as much as the gosh, but I don't know where Daisy would be flattered right now. No, no, it's not cutting the mood. You're killing the mood right now by saying that. No, no, I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. Okay. I, I was getting, oh, okay. Back into the mood. Daisy blinked, oddly flattered. You are right, it does kill the mood. <laughs> she can't figure out what it's made of and has a funny smell to it. She steps over it and finds another strange piece on the floor, this one in the shape of a heart and covered with blood. Daisy tilted her head as she looked at the texture of the heart and then back at the flower. She shook her head. It couldn't be. She walks over to the next object on the floor, which is in the shape of a crescent moon. She keeps going. There was a little voice in her head that told her, turn around, go back, run away. But when she spotted Danny's bloody shirt on the floor, she kept going. The next bloody shape was a rocket ship. She found cutouts of stars, a deer, a hawk, a tiger, a guitar, music notes, smiley faces and more flowers all smeared with blood. The shapes were turning a darker pink as well. No. She kept shaking her head, telling herself what she was actually seeing couldn't be real. The blood trail suddenly widens and she finds more of Danny's clothes. More clumps of shapes were on the floor, this time bigger, leading up to the entrance of a dark room. These were more heart shapes, large and oddly maroon and possibly purple. It almost looked like these shapes had been pieced together. That odd smell was so strong, she gagged. Daisy slapped a hand to her nose and mouth so she wouldn't throw up. Danny's cell phone is ringing on the ground. Missed calls from both mum and dad. She enters the room slowly, calling out for Danny. She turns on the light. 
She approaches a small clump in a red pile in a red puddle. Then she screams. The final clump in the centre of the room was a silent and still human heart. <laughs> oh my god. Oh god, oh my god, oh my god. That is so weird. That's such a weird story. That might be the grossest story in Tales. Like it's... I guess it's gory. I guess it's gore. I mean, I'm probably like very desensitized to these stories at this point because what we've read like what? There's 36 in Fazbear Frights and so far in Tales from the Pizzaplex there have been 3 times 6, 18 plus 2, 20. So we've read 56 stories, right? That's actually insane by the way. We've read 56 stories? That's crazy. And most of them are on my channel. Um, but no, that's, that is a very gruesome story. That is actually gross to even think about. Um, but I love it. I actually really like it. <laughs> I hate that I like it. Let's see. I will not discuss this story at all until a significant amount of time has passed. That's the end of the live read. That's so funny. Um, yeah. Self -harm. Okay, I could have had that at the start. Like, th th this list. But whatever. Wow. Wow. This story also portrays these topics horrendously in a way that really shouldn't. I kind of... Hmm. I don't disagree. I think what, what they should have done is they should have had this warning in the book. Because you're right, it is, it is a form of self-harm. Toxic relationships, eh, not really, not not entirely, um, and suicide, yeah, I guess he did kind of, he, he knew what he was doing at the end, um, and like gore, yeah. So I feel like that should have kind of been a warning in the book. I don't think it was too far though. Like, obviously you know not to, you know not to harm yourself. For the benefit of other people. Obviously not. But I think that was... I think that as a story is... Is really good. You could you could see his desperation. It was it was very... Um, sociopathic, I guess. I, like, it's... It's... It's something. It's something. I think I'm gonna leave the comments to decide. Do you... Did you enjoy this? I mean, like... Okay. The thing is, like... I know I, I ask if you enjoyed this, and it's like, it's hard to say that you enjoy something that's as gruesome and gory as this, but I genuinely enjoy it as a story. I think it's, I think it's written really well, and it's terrifying. It's, it's, ugh. I hate it, just like bits of flesh coming, oh no, I can't even talk about it. I can't talk about it. It's gross. But like, I like how it gets progressively worse, and you could kind of tell where it was going, and it just, oh, gives me the shivers. Anyway, this story was a thing. Let me know in the comments what you thought of it. Um, so did you enjoy it? Did you think it was too far? I don't think anything uh, has been too far in, in these series. I, I think they are quite a good level. Not for kindergartners, <laughs> as we were saying. Definitely not. But, um, so yeah. Make sure you subscribe. Subscribe to my second channel as well so you can see when audiobooks come out. And that has been Tiger Rock. What did I think of it overall? I, again, I thought it was kind of mid. I thought it was mid. Um, I thought it was... Hmm, it's it's difficult. It might be... I actually wouldn't say it's the worst book in Tales. I don't know what the worst book is. We're gonna do a Tales, um, a Tales tier list anyway, so watch out for that. Anyway, I will see you in another video. <laughs> Goodbye.